name is Jen Keefe and welcome to Cooking with the Keefs. We are actually going to be doing more baking than cooking today. And I've asked my mom, Donna. Hi folks. <laughs> to come in and help me out today because our focus today is Thanksgiving pies and a few different techniques and painted pie pastry and some fun things. And Thanksgiving's all about cooking with your family and traditions. And my tradition, of course, is baking with my family. So baking with my mom and she... I baked with my mom and <laughs> yeah. then we got our, my granddaughter into it. So yeah. it's four generations right now in my family that, <laughs> that bakes on um, Thanksgiving and of course Christmas. Christmas. Yeah, all the holidays. So, yeah. so um, I wanted to bring a little bit of hominess and family to you guys there at home and we're gonna get started. So I feel like a lot of people are intimidated by um, pie and pie dough, and they think it's this big involved thing. Right. Uh, so I wanna kind of debunk that a little bit, give you a really quick, easy pie recipe. Um, so we're just gonna go ahead and get started. So in this, I'm gonna show you um, how I do it because it's faster, it's easier, a little less work, right in the, um, what is this thing called? Food again? processor. Food processor, thank you. And I already have two and a half cups of flour, a teaspoon of salt, I'm going to add some sugar, about a tablespoon of sugar. And this can all be done really quickly and last minute because it's all stuff you really have in your pantry and on hand. Definitely. And so, all right, so we've got a tablespoon of sugar sprinkled in there. And we're gonna add in, let me grab this butter. You want your butter to be super cold, so you wanna use it straight out of the fridge. And mom, I'll probably have you help me cut up one stick while I do the other. Okay. Uh, let's see if we have, I think there's more knives in there too. Right there. And we're just gonna cut these into tablespoons and toss them into the flour mixture. And this will coat the butter with the flour. It's also gonna chop it up into little pieces and we don't want it to look like wet sand. We want to leave about piece-sized uh, bits of the butter and leaving those little pieces of um, bigger chunks is going to be what makes your pie crust more flaky. So when you're cutting your butter up, you wanna make sure that you're cutting it about a tablespoon a piece mm -hmm. so you should end up with eight tablespoons of butter that yep. you're putting uh, well 16 yeah. yep that you're putting into the um, so one full cup pie dough yep yep one full cup of butter and you keep cut it evenly because then it will process and cut up more evenly mm -hmm. and we'll go ahead and stick those to the side and so simple easy and we're just gonna pulse it and get it going and you really this takes seconds all right, I'm gonna pull this off. So I can still see there's some really big chunks of butter like this in there. So still need to keep going. And we're just gonna pulse it. I'm not gonna turn it on all the way because then it'll happen quicker than you know and then it's too late. So let's see, we've got, all right, we're almost there. I'm probably gonna pulse it one or two more times. And go ahead and stick your fingers right in there, wash your hands, but other than that, you're good. You wanna, you're gonna get a little messy making pie. So you can see in here that I've got some bigger pieces. I don't know if you can see on the camera, but some bigger pieces of butter in there. And that, again, is gonna be what makes it so flaky. The butter, the bigger chunks, get trapped in between the layers of flour and in the oven it will start to melt and when it melts it creates this layer in between the dough and that's what gives you flakiness so we're going to dump this out into a bowl and mom can i give that to you just stick in the fridge we'll get that out of the way okay and Already, I had my mom put together some ice water for me a few minutes ago, so do that first. You're gonna take um, your ice water 
And around this time of year, it's probably a little bit more dry in the house. You have the heat going, it's humid. Uh, it's not too humid, it's a little more dry. We're gonna do about four tablespoons to start, but I find that generally I need about six, but you know, the temperature in your house is all gonna play a role in how much you need, which is why we start with less, so you can always add more. So you're just gonna get your hands in there, start kneading your dough. And you don't want to add more liquid too prematurely because it will come together. So, and again, this is really it. Once we're done kneading, we're gonna wrap it up, put it in some plastic and stick it in the fridge. You can do this same day and it's usually good within the hour or this is great because you can do this in advance, make a couple of batches so that you have them on hand and you can see that's already starting to come together, but we probably need another couple tablespoons. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that. And mom, I'm gonna see. So you, when you do it, do you usually do um, the food processor or a pastry blender? Well, now I do the food processor, but of course, back when I started, <laughs> um, they didn't have the food processors. So I would use the pastry blender and that's, this is what the pastry blender looks like. Yep and you get all your ingredients in the bowl and when it comes time to put the butter in you have to then knead the pastry blender in to cut up the butter yep. into and basically what you want it to look like is small pea size um, pieces of once, butter of butter once yep. you're done so you same effect only instead of the machine it's the pastry blender. And, and I mean, probably back in the day, you even did two forks or two knives. Yep, um, absolutely. But the pastry blenders you can find all over the place. They, you know, Bed Bath & Beyond, Amazon, of course. Um, but shop local when you can. <laughs> and this dough is pretty much it. It's done. And it's not super sticky. So it's easy to work with. And that's it. And you don't want to mush it or work with it too, too much because you don't want to melt that butter prematurely. That's also why we're gonna stick it back in the fridge, but I'm just gonna make sure. Let me just ask you, is that yeah. a one pie or a two pie crust? So, good question. So this recipe makes two crusts. So it'll be good for two, let's say, pumpkin pies, because you only need one crust for a pumpkin pie, or one crust. This is good for savory recipes too, so I use the same recipe for my uh, chicken pot pie, which is only a top crust, so you can make two of those with these. And, uh, or it will make one single apple pie. So I'll show you our apple pie later on that has two crusts. So I generally do this in double batches. Um, and yeah, so that's it. So you've got your two crusts. You're gonna flatten these into a disc, wrap them in some saran wrap, and stick those in the fridge for an hour. You can do these days in advance. I would say probably up to a week in the fridge. Yeah, and definitely. maybe a month in the freezer. Mm -hmm. So that's it. I don't have saran wrap with me, but you get the idea. <laughs> so I'll put that aside. And mom, we're gonna now roll out our, through the magic of television and prep our dough right here. So do you wanna switch or you wanna roll? Yeah, I can. <laughs> you wanna start rolling? I'll start rolling. All right, so what we have here is we have some flour already sprinkled out on our work area. We have the dough and I don't, think you can really say it. Well, yeah, you can. The butter here kind of poking through the little lighter marks, that's what you want to see. That's super important. If you've gone too far, you're not going to see that. Those little bits of butter are what's going to give you your flakiness and really give you that really good melt in your mouth crust. Right. All right. So we'll go ahead and roll that. I'd say... So when you start rolling, yep. you, you want to make sure that you have some flour lots of flour un underneath the pie crust so you because you do not want it sticking to the um the, to the surface and you want some flour on the rolling pin and you want to go up and down and get a and when you see it starting to stick you just want to get a little bit more flour on there and then you also want to go across so the goal is obviously to make this as round of a circle as we possibly can. So you'll see little bits and pieces that are starting to kind of crack a little bit. So you want to close those up and you want to focus on, you know, 
flattening those out and getting it um, nice and nice and even yep. so when like you're rolling. Even pressure. Sometimes I do like the quarter turn method where I like start rolling in one direction and I turn the dough. So you could do it either way, whatever you're the most comfortable with. You could use a rolling pin like this. There's also a French rolling pin, which some of you may have and not even know the difference is like this. So you can see this one kind of spins as you roll. It's a little bit heavier too. Mm -hmm. So it helps you roll the dough. This style, you're gonna do a little bit more work. It's a little bit more of an older style, but you really need to press down to get that nice even texture. Right. Um, so yeah, she's, I'm gonna say this, she's so much better at rolling up pie dough than I am. <laughs> Mine is a lot more rustic, but again, not gonna matter in the end when you when it tastes good, when right? When it tastes so, great, right. And doesn't I've matter. Just a few more years experience than she has. Not many, but a few. <laughs> <laughs> so she's got that rolled out and we'll say maybe roll it out to about a little less than a quarter of an eighth of an inch. Yeah. Thick. I don't know. I don't even know. I yeah, don't even understand those references when it calls for an arrest right. I'm like, I do it by eye, by feel. Um, so when you're ready to put it in the so pie dish. So when you're dish, looking at it, you want to see, put your pie dish over it yep. and make sure that you have plenty of dough around it so that it, it makes up for the um, crevices when you're um, putting the pie dough into the pie plate. Perfect. And then another, and then I'm sure my mom will show you the folded in half method and to place it into mm -hmm. your pie dish. And while she's doing that, I'm just going to start working on the pumpkin pie filling. And this is unbelievably fast, but I'll let her finish that first. Okay, so we folded it in half. Nice, it didn't stick to the surface because we had plenty of dough. And let me move this over here so we can see. And then you're going to gently pull your, pull your dough into the pie plate, going around, get, getting rid of the air pockets that there might be, and making sure that Everything is, is, is covered inside there. So we do, we have a nice crust all, all covered and set inside the pie dish. Perfect. So now that that's all right, and see how fast that went? I mean, what did that take for us to so, make it? Minus the resting of an hour in the fridge, it's really super fast. It is. And if you do it ahead of time, this is great for the holidays because you're doing so many things, you're planning a meal, you're doing probably multiple desserts. This is a throw it together kind of thing. So that's all set to go. You don't have to do anything else to it. You don't have to prick holes in it, nothing, leave it alone. All right, now we're gonna do the pumpkin pie filling. This is one can of evaporated milk. So I gave that a really good shake. Emptied out, uh, 12 fluid ounces is what this can is. I think that's all evaporated milk. Mm -hmm. um, one can of pumpkin, um, of pureed pumpkin, not pumpkin pie filling, because we're gonna spice it and sugar it all ourselves. So you wanna make sure you're grabbing the right thing. So just pureed pumpkin in one full can. And get all of that out. And this is a 15 ounce can. I like to be specific because they do have bigger cans. If you're gonna be doing more than one pie, it's good to buy the bigger cans, but 15 ounces or one can of pumpkin puree. And three quarters of a cup sugar. Mom, I'm gonna have you crack and beat those eggs for me. Okay. Well, I add in, it's gonna be a half teaspoon of salt. and one and a half teaspoons of pumpkin pie spice. And if you don't have pumpkin, uh, pumpkin pie spice um, on hand, the, uh, there are tons and tons of recipes to make your own pumpkin pie spice. Um, it's just a mixture of, I think, cinnamon, nutmeg, I'll tell you right now, maybe a little bit of allspice, ginger. So you can make your own and it'll tell you how much of each spice to use. So if you don't wanna get specifically the pumpkin pie spice, you can spice it however you want. And then we're gonna add in two beaten eggs. So make sure if a recipe calls 
for two eggs beaten and not just two eggs, you beat the eggs before you incorporate it into the rest of the ingredients. So we're good to go. That's good. We'll pour that right in. And that's it. You just dump it all into one bowl and whisk it. I love one bowl recipes. <laughs> I'm always on here trying to, you know, less dishes, less mess, one step, single bowls. <laughs> and I guess that just comes from, you know, not wanting to have to worry about all the cleaning and, right. you know, who has time nowadays? I think we're all back to the hustle and bustle of work and school and kids and That's it, right? events and we're not stuck at home baking at our leisure anymore. So we need recipes that work for our lifestyles. And, and that's it. One of the things about that's great about being able to do your pie crust ahead of time is a lot of times we get overwhelmed when we start thinking about, oh my goodness, I have to bake all this stuff for Thanksgiving. I'm going to need, you know, two days before. Well, you can do a lot of the prep work and a lot of little things that will save you the time so yes. that the, the pie crust is ready. All you have to do Make is mix up the filling. Call um, it a day. All, and, and it takes half the time of, of what it normally would. Right. So always about less stress yeah. <laughs> today, and accomplishing more. Yeah. Today I started baking my little... Um, tea cakes for the breads for Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving and put them in the freezer, you know, and once once they're um, in the freezer, they, they stay great for a couple I of weeks. I feel like sometimes things, when you put them in the freezer, like breads or anything with exactly. like spices, really, um, it accentuates it, it and it, it helps. It, it makes does. it almost better, more moist. Right. So you just pop those out of the freezer first thing in the morning on Thanksgiving morning and let them thaw out and they're Call good to go for. And if you want a recipe for that, just email me. Yep. Got <laughs> Jen lots of recipes. At from scratch LLC.com. You can email me uh, and I'll send you any recipes for me and my mom that you need for the holidays. <laughs> we're more than happy to send those. So as you can see, I just dumped it all in and we're going to go ahead and do the uh, edging. So I usually just tuck whatever excess there is to give it a little bit more of a finished edge. That also gives you a thicker crust on the edge, um, which I think a lot of people enjoy that, you know, the edge of the yeah, pie, the, the extra pie dough. Yeah. I think when I was younger, I wasn't really much of a cry, uh, crust person. <laughs> and I feel like as I got older, I appreciated a whole lot more. Um, I always, I never understood the people that were like, ooh, give me your crust. I was like, ooh, great, you can have it. <laughs> But I don't know, I have a better appreciation for the crust now and enjoy it. And um, So yeah, so just tuck that in. Again, it's rustic. It does not have to be perfect. I think pies, when they're not perfect and they're homemade, they're not supposed to be perfect. They're not supposed to look store-bought and uniform. Let them, you know, I think the love <laughs> shows through when it's a little bit imperfect. Right. So there's that. You could leave it just like that whatever you prefer. Yep. Some people crimp the edges, so I'll show you here on our finished pie. I'll bring that over. I feel like some people, you can do like this little edging here. Again, it's not nearly as perfect as a store-bought one, but you know, I just went in and I pinched, pinched a little bit here and I used my fingers and that was it. You could also take a fork which I'll just take the fork, same fork that we use to uh, beat our eggs with. Again, one less dish. And we're just gonna do the fork tines. And you'll see that on a lot of pies. Right, nice and easy. Super easy, no stress, doesn't need to be perfect. And I think I'm gonna do this one with the fork tines because it's nice and quick and easy. And as you can see on my pie right here that I've pre-baked, I have some little painted pieces. We're gonna go ahead and show you how to do that real quick. Uh, actually, Mom, I'm going to have you beat up one more egg mm -hmm. and add a little bit of the water to it. Oh, eggs right eggs here. There. Yep. So while my mom beats up the egg wash, you want to do an egg wash on your pie crust because that's what gives you that nice, shiny finish on the edges, a little bit more of that golden color, and you don't want a pale blonde crust. And that's it. And then... 
I'll give you that back that fork. Thank you. A little bit of water in there. You got that? I didn't put the water in. You want Did to do your water? Just yeah. a little bit. About a tablespoon of water and with the, a whole egg. And none of this is going to go to waste and I'll show you why. We're going to do a little bit. And I'm now realizing something else I forgot, but that's okay. What's a that? pastry brush. And that's something else we'll have to make a donation for to the Revere TV kitchen. <laughs> uh, I forgot my rolling pin earlier, had to run home, get that. And so now uh, for a pastry brush, so what you would do is you would take this, you would brush it right around the edge of your pie crust. If it's a double crust pie, you're gonna cut your vents in the top of your pie and brush the whole top of that with your uh, egg wash. Take and this. Yep, you could take that. There you go. See, this is why we have moms, because they always come up with the solution. So if you do not have your pastry brush and you forget it at home or you just find you're without one, go ahead and use a paper towel, dip it in your egg wash, and go ahead and brush it on the edges. And it's okay if it pulls a little bit, no big deal. Um, just brush that lightly on the edges. And while Donna is doing that, I am going to start prepping our paint for the pie crust. And that, well, so this, just for baking, just so anyone that's following along and that wants the recipe, just to reiterate, three quarters of a cup sugar, one and a half teaspoons pumpkin pie spice, half a teaspoon salt, a cup of, uh, a can of pumpkin, a can of evaporated milk, and two eggs beaten. Dump it in a bowl, whisk it, put it in your pie shell, done. You're going to bake that for 15 minutes at 425. You're going to then reduce the oven temp without opening the oven to 350 and bake it for an additional 40 to 50 minutes. The reason you bake it a little bit higher at the beginning and lower at the end is because it's a custard pie. You want the custard to start to set and it prevents your custard from curdling if you cook it all one temp the entire time. So. That's a little trick that I learned on that. So we're gonna put this aside. And we're gonna do our paint. So now with the extra egg wash that you have here, you're gonna put a little bit, you know, any little container you have at home. And you don't need a lot for this. And we'll keep this as our third color. And you can use any food coloring that you can find at the grocery store. I'm going to do red, orange, and green for our fall palette. And I've got these little paint brushes that you can buy at Michael's. They're from Wilton. I think I'm almost positive I've seen these at Stop and Shop now too. They have that little sliver of the baking aisle at the very end. They have gel food coloring and little baking paint brushes, and lots of extra fun decorating tools for any kind of cake decorating or dessert decorating. And I'm just gonna put one drop of each color because you really just need very little. That's our red. Mom, I'll give you that to start mixing up okay. with a paintbrush. And a little bit of orange. And a little bit of green. And we'll put these aside and I'm going to show you. So if this does not seem easy enough for you as far as making a pie crust on your own and you still are like, you know what? I'm still just going to go to the store and buy my pie crust. <laughs> That's totally fine. I'm, I actually have a store bought pie crust that I'm going to show you how to cut out and paint. So we've got our orange, our red, our green, and actually those store bought pie crusts, you don't even have to worry about rolling them out. But as you can see, this comes together. You just want it completely mixed in. It's going to be really kind of vibrant. And that's what you want to see. All right. So here we go. We've got our colors. And mom, I'm going to have you. I know this is not usually what we do in our family. No, it's not. <laughs> but we're going to open this up. Actually, I probably should have brought scissors for this too. But here you go. So... This is just a store-bought Pillsbury pie crust. Comes with two in a box, but I used one last night and I'll show you what I use that for in a minute. And we're just gonna, I found that I just 
rolled it out a little bit to make it nice and flat and even. And I'm going to show you what we're going to use for our cutters. So I've got a whole bunch of fall and winter ones here. My fall ones I got in a little set at Williams Sonoma. And they're relatively inexpensive. They're really cute. They're called plunger cutters. Um, so they're generally used for pie dough, but you can use these for cookies too, for some extra detail. I got these little uh, Christmassy ones with Christmas coming up as well. These I found at Michael's. I think I paid a dollar for each of them. And these are great for the kids. They're not sharp. They can't hurt themselves. Um, so this is a great thing. You could throw down a store-bought pie crust on the counter, one for each kid, put down the cutters, call it a day. They're going to go in and we're going to go ahead and press down the cutter first. And then the little plunger piece up top here, we're going to just press down a couple of times and that's what gives that little detail. And you just plunge it out and that's it. And you just keep cutting and mom will give you, you want a leaf, a pumpkin, sure. an apple. And we'll cut these out, plunge that, and then put press down to make the indents for the design. And then plunge that. And that's it. And you just keep going. And again, this is a great way for the kids to get involved. And I have a little tray here. And we're going to pre-bake these before we put them on the pie crust. If I tried putting the raw pie dough on top of the pumpkin pie, it's just gonna sink in because it's too liquidy. So I bake the pie and bake the design separately and just plop them on top. So this, here we go. I've got a little piece of parchment paper here on our tray. And while my mom keeps cutting, I'll line these up and start painting and show you that. So here we go. I'm gonna start with the green so I can do the leaves and the stems. And hopefully you can see that. So I let the extra egg wash kind of pool in those little indents that we cut them in because um, it gives the design some more dimension and texture. And these can be used for pie decoration these could be used actually pressed along the edge of your raw pie and baked with the pie if you're not putting it on top of the filling and you're just going to put them on the edge that would make a beautiful edge and you can see how pretty this is already looking and this is just a great way to get the kids involved or to just you know make your regular pie if you're usually the one bringing the pie this is a great way to just step up her game a little bit without a whole lot of extra effort. You've already got the egg wash that you're using to brush on your pie. I'm sure everybody's got a little bit of food coloring in their house somewhere. Oops. And that's it. And so I've got that. And we'll go in with some more colors. Let's do the apple. Okay, this one doesn't want to come out. That's all right. All right, moving on. So one thing um, that each generation I find brings to our family cooking is um, a, a little bit more up in the game. And that's <laughs> one thing that um, Jennifer has done in, in doing these um, colorful cutouts, cutouts that um, go on the pies. Just makes it look professional and that's what she's all about. Um, so, so each each time, I mean, I know I've added things to what my mother has done, and Adriana has come along, and oh, she's yeah. making her own. She does her macarons, the French macarons, and um, you know that was something that she really wanted to get into, and she is fantastic at it. She, she has really, her own little business with it. Yeah, she <laughs> loves making and baking for people and she has her own little recipe book and it's so funny because I still have the recipe book that I started when I was probably 13 maybe. Younger. The um, recipes you see here that I'm holding, This I typed this when I was 13 years old. <laughs> I just started keeping a book and it's so funny because she does exactly the same thing and I think this, um, when your kids are younger get them in the kitchen get them involved give them little jobs I you know 
That's what I remember about baking with my mom, especially at the holidays. We were allowed to zest the orange and measure this and mix that. And it wasn't um, all about, hey, just get, hurry up, get it done. We were all able to get involved, which was really nice. And I think, especially at the holidays when you're baking for so many people and the kids see your family and other people enjoying it, something they made that they helped with Ugh, i think it's so important it is and i just see even still i get that feeling like oh you really like what i made that's so great <laughs> yeah and you know there's always that anticipation of will they like it won't they like it so i see my kids really enjoy cooking and baking for their friends and our family still and so i think that's really important so again plop this down on the counter with the little flour buy the little cookie cutters at michael's I mean, it can't cost you more than 5 or $10 to do this as a project with them. A rainy day, a snowy day, any holiday. And what I would do if you're looking, maybe you're not making a pie, but you want to do this. Um, I made a pumpkin dip. And so I'll show you what I did with the, I'll pull these over so you can see that. And maybe we can move the pie out of the way and bring these back here. So these are the ones that I cut up last night. I don't know if you can see them. Let me see. There we go. So this is a pumpkin dip that I make, which I will go over the recipe. I'm not going to make it for you, but I'll go, it's so easy. I'll go over that. These are the little cutouts that I baked. Bake them for about 10 minutes, depending on your oven, 8 to 10 minutes at 375, and they're done. You just pop them out, and they're good to go. And these are delicious dipped in this pumpkin dip. And it's a cream cheese pumpkin dip, and it's really, really yummy. So in that, um, in finishing these, I'm just gonna finish painting these real quick. We're gonna um, pop those in the oven, and I sometimes I sprinkle a little bit of sugar on them. I do like a sparkling sugar. You can get this. Um, you can get this at the grocery store. It's just called sparkling sugar or decorative sugar. You could use a turbinado sugar. Um, any of those would work. So I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit of that on and we'll pop those in the oven in a second. And that gives a little more, a bit more sweetness and a little bit more crunch. And that's it. And you're good to go. And going over the recipe for the pumpkin dip, which I also have written on a little piece of paper that I wrote God knows how long. It's just six ounces of softened cream cheese, a half a cup of brown sugar, a half a cup of pumpkin, two teaspoons of maple syrup, and a half teaspoon of cinnamon. You're just gonna beat the cream cheese, the brown sugar, and the pumpkin for a few minutes until it's creamy. Then you're gonna beat in the brown sugar, I'm sorry, the maple syrup and the cinnamon. And that's it. I usually serve this with apple slices or graham crackers or nilla wafers or these gorgeous little pie chips. So that's another dessert you could make too out of your extra pie crust. Um, and again, great way to get the kids, kids involved, especially those who are a little bit younger. Right. Um, so I think that that is, we did our pie. Oh, I'll go over the apple pie too. I wanted to show you um, an apple pie. I have that finished over here. I don't know if, uh, I think it's, there you go. There we go. And that's there, that's a double crust recipe. And I went ahead, for this one, I actually did bake the decorations right onto the crust and painted the rim to kind of just give you guys another look, another feel. And the pie recipe I use is actually my Auntie Debbie's apple pie recipe. That's my mom's sister. And she does six cups sliced apples, two tablespoons of flour, a cup of sugar, a teaspoon of cinnamon, a half a teaspoon nutmeg, and two tablespoons of butter. You slice and core and peel your apples. I like to do mine probably like quarter inch thick because I want my apples to still, still have a little bit of a bite. I don't want them to be too soggy. Mm -hmm. I toss everything but the butter in a bowl, dump it into my bottom pie crust, cut the two tablespoons of butter into about eight little pieces and I dot on top of the apples with my butter. And then I go ahead and cover the top, do my decorations. Uh, you can see kind of the texture on here. I did um, the sparkling sugar all over to give it a little bit more sweetness and crunch and baked it at 375 
for about 25, 30 minutes. Then I check in on it to check on the crust. If it's starting to brown too much, you wanna tent it or cover the rim with some foil and that will prevent this from burning too much before the rest of the inside of the pie is done baking. So those are just a few recipes we gave you today. I know we didn't do a whole lot on camera for them, but we've got your pumpkin pie, your apple pie, a pumpkin dip with painted pie chips, and a cool new way to kind of dress up your pies with your egg wash and some food coloring and some sugar, and that's it. So I think, oh, another thing that I wanted to bring up too, if you have anyone with food sensitivities in your life, like I do, mm -hmm. <laughs> my mom is gluten-free, I use the Cup for Cup brand gluten-free pie mix, and it you can't even tell. And it's pretty much the same thing. It's a gluten-free flour mix that you add cold butter and ice water, and this one actually calls for an egg yolk right in it, and you roll it out and chill it the same way you would a regular dough, and no one is gonna know. But you know what? It's inclusive of everyone, right. of what they can eat. The pumpkin pie filling is already gluten-free. For the apple pie filling, you can do that gluten-free. You just wanna sub in um, cornstarch corn instead of flour as your thickener. So that's really it, and I think yeah. Mom, did I forget anything? I don't think so. <laughs> I think we got it covered. I'm notorious for forgetting things. But, you know, it's this thing with, with the um, cutouts, it's important. You want to get the kids involved young. Mm -hmm. And those, those kids will separate as to who wants to do it and who doesn't. But those that really show interest, you know, then you can give them a little bit more the next time to do. You know, let them help you roll out the, the, the pie crust. Yeah. You know, let them help you mix up the um, pumpkin pie um, filling. Filling, yeah. And um, you know, that they'll appreciate it. And just like what has happened in our family, we you have generations that continue on the tradition and have those special recipes that everybody can enjoy all the time. Yeah. Absolutely. At every holiday. And it's meaningful. So, and then when you can't be together like we have had happen in the past, these past couple of years, you know what? You all bake the same things. It reminds you of your family. It reminds you when you can't be home and can't be with your loved ones. Uh, it brings a little bit of home to you. Right. And so we just want to say happy Thanksgiving. Ha happy Thanksgiving, and everyone. I'm sure that Patrick will be back the next time we uh, come on here. And maybe we'll do something more Christmassy and a little bit more festive for the winter. And if you have any questions, again, my email is jen, J-E-N-N, -N, at fromscratchllc.com. Email me for any recipes or any questions you have about the recipes you've seen here. And uh, if you run into me or Patrick on the street, let us know what you think of the show. And we look forward to coming back. And thank you, Mom. Thanks for having thank me. Thank you for coming. Mm. Mwah. Love you. Thank Love you, you guys. Have a good one. Bye. Thank you.